Well, just, I guess, tell us about uh, Marco Goudreau and what you think he can add to your team. Um, you know what? I, I'll <laughs> go back a little further. Uh, when we met at uh, our mid-year meetings, met with the coaching staff and met with our uh, pro scouting staff, we had identified that we could really benefit from adding two forwards to our group. Uh, two forwards that would be able to play a heavy, hard, competitive game. Um, and ideally, one of those two forwards would be a big physical center. Also, just because of our reality, our, our, our cap situation this year and next, I was hoping that those players would be players that uh, I would be able to keep next year. Uh, ideally, they'd be signed. Uh, ideally, they'd be signed to contracts that provide really good uh, value from a, a cap standpoint. And the two players that we had identified as being the best fit for our group were Barclay Goodrow and Blake Coleman. Now, I didn't know that we'd be able to get him. Uh, first of all, New Jersey didn't have to trade Blake Coleman. He was under contract for one more year. Um, and he was, again, on, on a contract that provides really good value. It was the same thing with San Jose and Barclay Goodrow. They didn't have to trade him. He was under contract for one more year on, on a contract that's uh, it's very favorable from a, a cap management standpoint. Uh, so I knew that this time of year, uh, if I was going to get these players, I was going to have to be really aggressive. And that was my mindset going into the period leading up to the trade deadline, is I was going to be really aggressive uh, in trying to get these two players. Uh, and not knowing if I'd be able to. Uh, we also looked at other avenues because I didn't know if I'd be able to get these players. But these were the two guys that we felt were the best fit for our organization to help us win this year and help us maintain our competitiveness going into next season as well. Um, at this time of year, it's just the reality. You're going to pay a premium. If you're a buyer, you're going to pay a premium for uh, whatever players you end up acquiring. That's usually the case. Um, and if you're a seller, you're out there and you're looking to maximize the return on, on the, the assets, the contracts, the players that you're, you're moving. But I was in the buyer's chair, and my mindset was not about value maximization. It's about winning hockey games. And I look at our team with Blake Coleman in there, and I look at our team with Barclay Goodrow in there, and we're a better team now. And we're going to be a harder team to take out uh, come springtime with the addition of these two players. So that's kind of the history of the last few weeks going into uh, today's trade deadline. Uh, over the course of the last few weeks, we, we suffered a few injuries to some defensemen. Uh, and that had me look into uh, right shot defensemen uh, to kind of shore up our right side. On the left side, uh, you know, we, we have Henman, we have McDonough, we have Sergachev, we have Coburn. That's probably as good four left shot D as you're going to find anywhere on, on any one team. Um, we expect Ryan McDonough to come back within 10 to 14 days, uh, and he should be fine. Um, Jan Ruta is probably still two to three weeks away. Um, Eric Cernak, uh hopefully he can play tomorrow. We'll find out how, how he is tomorrow morning. He, he should be OK. He's day to day if he's not playing tomorrow anyway, so nothing uh, long term that's of concern to us. Um, Jan Ruto is probably the one injury because he was playing big minutes for us, and he's still a few weeks away. Um, and w once the playoffs start, uh, the pace is pretty high. You've got to be ready to play, bring your A game right away. So that kind of had me looking into possibly bringing in a right shot defenseman. We, we explored uh, a number of possibilities. And in the last few days, uh, Zach Bogosian ended up being an unrestricted free agent uh, all of a sudden, and he became <laughs> an option for us. And, and uh, we pursued that option. Obviously, they, we didn't have to give up any assets to acquire services. Uh, the cap space was very affordable for us at this point. Zach wasn't really worried about what he was going to get paid. He was more worried about going to an environment where he has a chance to win a Stanley Cup. And uh, we, we're, we're a contender. Uh, and with him, we're a better team. He's another guy who brings us some physicality and some size there on the back end. It was hard to play against. And I think he also makes us a better team. And he's going to be a good complement to whichever, ones of, whichever one of our, our left shot defense ends up being paired with, whether it's Henman or McDonough or Sergachev. Uh, he's going to be a good complement to those guys. No question, you're obviously a, a better team now. And you mentioned you have to pay a premium anytime you're a buyer at the deadline. How do you balance as a GM, the present, and the future in terms of when you look at trading you know, first round picks, which obviously are, are valuable in, in both the senses? Of well, ultimately, at the deadline when you're a buyer, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. And I decided I was going to take the risk of being damned because I did. And so we 
aggressively pursue these players and we paid uh, what we had to pay to get them and, and make us the best team possible going into the playoffs this year. To Joe's point, um, Jim Rutherford has said in the last couple of weeks, look, he has a window with Malkin and Crosby and Latang. Your group is, your core group is a little younger, but as he said, that window, you have to surround these players and if it costs you draft picks, that's what you have to pay. Do you have that view, given how talented your team is now, that whatever the window is, you got to go for it? Well, I think we're set up with our contracts and the age of our players to be competitive for the foreseeable future. I don't know how long that period is going to be, and it's my job to extend that period as, as much as possible. But Jim Rutherford's a very wise man. He also has three cups and a Hall of Fame jacket. So <laughs> if, he says, if he says it's time to go for it, maybe he's on to something. What, what, did, what, did you, what did you see in Bogosian? You know, obviously he struggled this year the, coming back from, from injury, injury, not getting a lot of playing time in Buffalo. Is a motivated athlete a good athlete? Well, he, obviously he's motivated by the fact that, you know, he just got his contract terminated. He cleared waivers. Uh, he's motivated because he gets to come to a team that's a contender and he might win his first Stanley Cup. He's never played a playoff game, I believe. Uh, so that's motivating. Obviously, his contract's up. He's an unrestricted free agent at the end of this season. So all these factors should contribute to him being a really uh, motivated player. Uh, but the other guys we have in that locker room haven't necessarily gone to that reality, and they, they're motivated to win too. Uh, everyone is in this business. It's just the reality of, of competitive sports at the highest level. Uh, I think having seen him play uh, more so last season, I thought that's probably the best hockey he's ever played, the hockey he played last season for the Sabres. Um, Obviously, he had the, the hip surgery, and, and now, you know, you never know how quickly you're going to recover from, from any type of, of surgery, but he's motivated. I know he's been skating, uh, and, and again, I think he's going to be a good complement to our players. And come playoff time, I think his style of play is going to be a good, uh, uh, a good asset for us there on the back end. Good. The solid top six defenseman, you know, when, you, when you're healthy, when you are healthy and Ruta's back, mm -hmm. where does, I guess, he slide in? Is that you guys competing for a spot or is like... I don't, I don't know. know. The reality is I don't know. It, hopefully we are at at some point entirely healthy. All our defensemen are healthy and, and then the coaches will have options and, and, and hard decisions to make. You said you targeted these two. You said you wanted a physical for What was it specifically about these two? There are other forwards that fit the description you gave, so why these two specifically for you guys? Well, they're different. First of all, if I, I focus on, on Barkley, uh, he was the big center. We needed a big physical center, and he brings that. He has the size. Uh, he also has the physicality. He plays with an edge. But he, this year, because of injuries in San Jose, he was asked to play a bigger role. I was asked to play with more skilled players, and he handled those responsibilities really well. We've had our eye on him uh, for the last few months here, and uh, I've watched most of his games the last two months, um, either live or on video, either myself or some, some, uh, some members within our staff. Uh, he's gone up against some really good players and been matched up against some really good players and has handled it really well. So I think he's somewhat of an underrated player, a player that's kind of now hitting his stride and kind of going into his peak uh, play. And he was given an opportunity this year to showcase himself and show that he could handle more and he's done really well. So he was a really good fit in terms of uh, finding that big physical center. Uh, the contract obviously is a factor. You have to be able to fit the player in uh, this year. And in this case, he's also, he also brings us value for next season in terms of our cap management. Um, and he was available. Like, there are a lot of good players. That doesn't mean they're, ne they're, they're necessarily available at this time of year. Blake Coleman brought the physicality, uh, brought the speed. Um, he finishes every check. He's relentless on the puck. Uh, he really fits our style of play. Uh, we don't have a lot of players that initially have Barclays profile, uh, and Blake Coleman is just another one of those guys. That we, we, we already have some of those guys, but we love those guys. So they're two different players, and I think they, they complement the group of forwards that we have very well. You said when you're a buyer, damned if you do, damned if you don't. Um, does last year's experience of being damned when you didn't um, feed into kind of wanting to find not any move but the right move this year? Well, at the same time last year when we were looking at uh, what could we do trade deadline-wise, there, was there wasn't anything that was screaming at us that there was a positional upgrade that we needed. 
So the situation was different. We were sitting out some really good players last year, uh, and I don't think ultimately that I don't feel like I passed up on something last year that would have made a difference. So yeah, with, the, with the trade deadline now passed, what's your job now? Like it's almost like there's nothing more you can do for this team going forward in the playoffs. You just focus now on draft and college and, and free agent. Yeah, well, we're still managing the day-to-day -day here. Uh, the AHL trade deadline's a week away, so uh, we're going to be looking to see if we can't help the Syracuse Crunch uh, between now and the deadline and ha help them with their playoff push. Uh, and then we're looking, we're starting to get ready for uh, free agency next summer and contracts uh, that we will need to negotiate and budgets that we need to prepare and submit. And so there's always something to do. It's just different. We had those meetings a couple months ago with the, the Pro Scouts, like, Motion was to adding two fours. Were you ever talking about defensemen until the injuries came up, or so you weren't actually? Eyeing we did to be the, ready, yeah. uh, but we really kind of re started focusing on it more. I would say, I don't know, since Ruto's injury, since Jan's injury. Part of the could, price, the, part of the premium price you paid for Goudreau is that because not just the salary and the good fit, but because players like him are fewer and farther between these days. Big physical players, that, and also a center, yeah. and also San Jose didn't have to trade him. Right? It's not like they were losing him at the end of the year. They had him under team control for one more year at a, a really cap-friendly number. With, now you got Patrick Maroon in the offseason. you got Goudreau now. How much harder a team are you to play, and not, not skill-wise, but once the playoffs come around, being a flexible team of being able to play different styles depending on the opponent? Yeah. I can't quantify it, but I know we are harder to play against, and I think we're a better team. So you had two forwards here. What happens to Stevens? Does he go down? Is that a paper move? Or is he no, he, we reassigned him to Syracuse. And in defense, anything you have to really... Uh, well, we, we reassigned uh, Cameron yeah, Gauntz earlier yeah. today. Yeah. So day-to-day. Day-to-day, so. day -to -day, hopefully ready tomorrow. So that gives us seven healthy defensemen and 13 healthy forwards. So we should be good. How Wait. far before 3 o'clock did you get this deal done? Um, What's the timestamp on that email? <laughs> I don't remember, but sometime shortly after 2.30. Yeah, well, they've, been, they've been in the works for a long time, as far as you mentioned. You identified him from the beginning, so that's something you've been back and forth for. Yeah, well, I had targeted him. That doesn't mean Doug was willing to move him or was even considering moving him, and it was the same thing with Blake Coleman. Uh, eventually, I had to step up to get their attention, and that's, that's what I did. Uh, any, any, any oh, more? Any moves around the league impress you? What what some teams did either. I league haven't league really had that. time to. Um, I haven't really had time to look around. I'm not even sure all the trades that, that have taken <laughs> place yet. <laughs> I'm going to look at it tonight. I don't, so I, I can't tell you. I'm not even aware of probably half the trades that took place. When do you get a chance to take a breath? And how long has it been? You know, how long has your life been frenzied with all this stuff going on? Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm very fortunate we have a really good staff. I'm surrounded with some really good people. Uh, they're all here in the building in our war room still. Uh, so that helps. I felt going into the, uh, uh, you know, the last week that we were really prepared. Our people knew their, our players, whether it was from an analytics standpoint, from a coaching standpoint, from a scouting standpoint, uh, from a character standpoint. We had good intel on these, on these players as people, as teammates. Um, so that obviously eases the, the, the strain, if, if you will. You mentioned the, the crunch and the player you got in the Martel trade, I was moved in this one. Yeah. Uh, what was the mindset in that move for Mart Martel's trade, and then what are you looking to add to that? Well, we were, at, fi we were at 50 contracts mm -hmm. after signing mm -hmm. Zach yesterday. Uh, so we had, if we were taking in Barclay Goodrow, we had to move a contract, and San Jose wanted Anthony Greco. So that's why he was moved. Really with, with Mitchell Stevens, he asserted himself rather well while he was here. What did he show you um, that if you had to count on him again this year and more importantly, moving forward to next year and beyond? Uh, that he's NHL ready and that he is ready to assume a bigger role. Um, certainly next year, uh, he'll probably be called upon to play a bigger role. Uh, it's for him to earn it, but he's, what he's shown us this year, uh, that's, it bodes really well for, for him going forward and uh, he can, he did a really good job on face-offs for us. He did a good job on the penalty kill. He did a good job on the forecheck. Uh, he generated some offense, uh, some offensive chances. So he's, uh, uh, he earned it over his, you know, he earned the opportunity through his play uh, in Syracuse going 
you know, leading up to the first recall. We didn't expect he to be here as long as he ended up being here, uh, but he just moved some guys through his play, kind of moved some guys out and deserved to be here. And now, you know, we've added two forwards that uh, are a little more battle tested and have more experience and, and are a little more established. And he can go back to Syracuse and keep working on his game and keep working on, on playing the center position and coming back a better player next time. You guys managed lots of relatively little moves around the salary cap of when you sent guys down, keeping the roster, um, et cetera, et cetera. How much did that put you guys in a position to, you ended up with low salary moves, but potentially do something now? Uh, the number of times I've thought of Ryan Callahan in the last two weeks, it, like I couldn't mention it because if we weren't able to make the Ryan Callahan trade last summer, we probably wouldn't have been in a position to do as much as we did. Uh, we just wouldn't have had the cap space. So uh, it was a small move at the time, and you don't know if it's going to pay dividends or not. And uh, we're fortunate that there were financial considerations to that move. Uh, and by that, I mean Jeff Vinnick had to go get in his pocket and, and, and pay more in terms of cash. But it allowed us, us, it allowed us some flexibility to be able to make a little more uh, noise at the trade deadline this year than we would have otherwise. Good. Thank you.